So before we get started on Camera Raw, I'd like to talk to you about the differences between shooting in JPEG as opposed to RAW format, which is primarily what your digital camera will use to capture and save your images to. These two file formats, along with TIFF, are all able to be opened and edited using Camera Raw, and I think it's fair to say that this course would be incomplete without first explaining the pros and cons of each format and why you would choose to shoot with one as opposed to another. So what actually is a RAW file format? Well, RAW files simply contain large amounts of unprocessed data recorded directly from your camera's sensor. In this sense, it is the digital equivalent to a film negative that has been exposed but has yet to be processed. So the primary advantage of shooting in RAW is that it gives the photographer complete control over how they would like their photos processed. Essentially, this means any aspect or nuance of an image the photographer will have control over. There are many characteristics passed on from the digital camera sensor that give RAW files this control. And before making your mind up as to which one you prefer, let's first take a look at those characteristics. RAW files have a higher bit depth of 12, 14, and in some cases even 16 bits of information. Now this is just a fancy way of saying how many levels of tonal information can be captured and stored in each RAW file straight from the sensor of your digital camera. An example of this would be a standard 12-bit camera, and when you times 2 bits to the power of 12, you end up with a camera that is capable of capturing 4096 levels of tonal information for you to work with, whereas 14 bits has 16,384 levels and 16 bits has 65,000 536 levels of tonal information. A higher bit depth results in being able to capture high dynamic range scenes, where the contrast ratios are extremely high, and an example of this would be, say, a nighttime scene or shooting during the middle of a sunny day, for example. Another added benefit of shooting with a high dynamic range is flexibility. And what I mean by flexibility is that if you were to incorrectly over or underexpose your photos when shooting in RAW, you can recover and restore your photos without any further deterioration far greater than that of any other image file format. Because RAW files are completely unprocessed, they still retain the full resolution of the digital camera sensor, which enables you to produce higher quality enlargements and prints without risking the introduction of compression artifacts that can be associated with JPEGs. But one of the drawbacks of shooting in RAW with a full resolution is the associated larger file sizes, which can take up more room on your memory card and reduce the amount of photos you can store at any one time. The bigger file sizes also means that your camera requires more processing power and time to be able to save your photos to the memory card. Because RAW files are linear and no processing has occurred yet, they still need post-processing before being able to view or print your photos on any other type of media. And it's at this stage where RAW files come to life, where the photographer's visualization and interpretation of the original scene is realized using RAW converters like Adobe's Camera Raw and Lightroom. Now larger file sizes, once again, require more computer processing power when editing, which can be a drawback or hassle if you have a really slow computer. So what is a JPEG file format? JPEG is widely recognized as a versatile image format the world over, and that's primarily because of its amazing ability to compress image data into smaller file sizes while still being able to retain high quality of image detail. A JPEG file contains less data than that of a RAW. How much depends on the compression and quality settings that you configure in camera. So the primary advantage to shooting in JPEG format over RAW is that all image processing occurs in camera, which essentially means you don't actually have to edit your photos if you don't want to. When you configure your digital camera, you have the choice of choosing how your JPEG or TIFF files for that matter are processed in camera. You're able to set the white balance, saturation, contrast, sharpening, resolution, and file size 
all from within the camera itself, not needing the assistance of a photo editor. Shooting in JPEG format also provides the luxury of smaller file sizes, which results in faster processing times in camera and allows you to be able to save more photos straight to your memory card. JPEG files are widely accepted throughout the world and can be opened on just about any device with any software application, not requiring much computer processing power at all. JPEGs can be easily sent and viewed via emails and can be printed without any fuss. And whilst all this sounds great thus far, shooting in JPEG has limitations and disadvantages that can dramatically affect the quality of your photographs. So the primary disadvantage of shooting in JPEG is that it yields less control in the hands of the photographer. And some photographers may prefer this, especially if their work revolves around repetition and speed. When you compare the two different file types, you notice that JPEGs processed in camera have a smaller bit depth than that of a raw file. They're converted in camera to 8 bits, which is not fully utilizing the full uh, capabilities of the digital camera sensor. 8-bit files have only 256 levels of tonal information, 0 to 255, and are therefore sacrificing a large amount of detail. Compared to a standard 12-bit RAW file, which has 4,096 levels of tonal information, a JPEG file is discarding 3,840 levels and only keeping 256, which means any further editing to your photos risk the introduction of digital artifacts depending on what type of adjustments you choose to make to your images. By having a smaller bit depth limits the potential dynamic range that your digital camera can capture, which makes high contrast scenes harder to reproduce without an obvious loss in detail, which usually occurs in the highlights. Depending on how you configure your digital camera settings can result in files that are often smaller in resolution than that of which your digital camera is capable of capturing. Which is fine just so long as you don't intend on enlarging your photos for printing greater than that of the JPEG's original pixel resolution. You can often get away with scaling your photos to that of 200% of the original size but with interpolation comes a loss in resolution and the obvious introduction of JPEG compression artifacts which can make the image look disjointed with fringing and jagged blocks. This is partially due to interpolation which can be simply explained as the resizing of an image increasing or decreasing the amount of pixels contained within that image based on the existing pixels. So if you were to enlarge a photo larger than the native resolution as determined by the digital camera sensor or camera settings, your photo editing program is actually analyzing the values surrounding all pixels contained within that image in order to approximately reproduce those surrounding pixels at larger sizes. Interpolation sounds quite technical and it is, but I digress. JPEG files are not flexible and in actual fact, they are destructive. Every time you open and make changes and then save a JPEG file, you are automatically degrading the quality of your image. This is because you are compressing the image for a second time. So you're actually taking your original JPEG image that has been compressed once and then compressing the compressed image again, which in return sacrifices more detail from your image. This is often referred to as a second generation file and the more generations you add to a JPEG file or any files for that matter the lower the quality of an image that remains. So which format is better to use? Well the answer to this question comes down to what you as the photographer are trying to achieve and then choosing the right tool for the job accordingly. If you are technically minded and are looking for high quality photographs that you have complete control over and enjoy editing your photos on the computer, then RAW files are definitely what you want to be shooting in. But if you're just after images that are quick, don't require any adjustments and aren't worried about getting as much detail out of your digital camera as possible, then shooting in JPEG would suit your style of photography. But don't forget, you can have the best of both worlds as most digital cameras allow you to capture in both RAW and JPEG, which gives you the flexibility of both formats. But having said that though, I'll leave you with this question. If you capture photos using both image formats, which format do you choose to correctly expose for? 
In the meantime, I'll see you on the inside of Camera Raw, looking at your questions and answering them for you, and just generally having a good time. Thanks, everybody.